Hi guys and welcome to my re-review of the Nexus 5X and I think there are at least two good reasons why I think it's worth taking another look at this phone to see if it maybe even has improved over time. The first one is as of just recently the price in Europe has come down to a more reasonable level and not that long ago an update was released that is supposed to improve the performance. But first I want to check the design and build quality once again because this time I got the white version and I have to say I prefer this one a lot over the black one which had an odd soft touch coating which I was never a big fan of even though it already was a huge improvement over the original Nexus 5X but this white coating for some reason just feels smoother and nicer to the touch in overall. What I think I would like to have changed though is the power button placement because it's quite a stretch if you have short fingers and I would wish for it to be at the volume up button which for me feels a little bit more convenient. The other thing that I would like to have changed is as you can see the sides go actually wider towards the back which makes the device feel bigger in the hand than it actually is and it's already not the most compact one as we speak of because if we compare it with the Samsung Galaxy S7 you can see how much taller it is and how much wider it is even though the display size is just 0.1 inches bigger. So. I have no complaints about the build quality at all because the device feels very solid and substantial, a little bit more on the lightweight side, but definitely not cheap. It doesn't bend or flex at all and it feels really, really good in the hand overall. But in terms of design, they could have made it a little bit more round or a little bit more organic just to improve the overall feel even more so. Now when it comes down to the display, I still think it's a high quality display, but the calibration is a little bit off. Whites and blacks are absolutely fine and I had no reason to go for the colder colors that we now have in the settings, but I think the colors could have been improved a little bit. I would have wished for a little bit more depth, a little bit more contrast and a little bit more saturation, but all this is no problem because you can just install a custom kernel and fix that. I've noticed this last time I used it on the Nexus 5 and it made a huge difference, so I would definitely recommend you to do just that. Now it comes down to the speaker. I'm not blown away, but I'm also not quite disappointed. Yes, I wish for it to be a little bit louder and not to be that shallow and flat, but it gets the job done. It's average, I would say. Now, when it comes down to the performance, I told you that the update was supposed to fix a few things and it definitely did because the delay has been gone that I saw in the recent past when I was switching between apps. It overall feels a lot lighter. The scrolling has become smoother and it overall feels just more snappy in general. And actually, even the gaming performance did improve, everything just is a little bit nicer, smoother and faster. So whatever they did, they did quite good. In terms of battery life, I'm still quite satisfied enough because decent with about four hours of screen time in my normal use. I can't really complain too much. I would wish for a solid half hour more, but as it is, it's good enough. Now, when it comes down to the software, I only have to tell you one thing. If you are a custom ROMer, then you will enjoy this device a lot because now we have even more so custom ROMs, but if you enjoy a stock Android feel and therefore like the Nexus, you will get all that. And since Android N will be coming soon, this device could be even more so capable. And the last thing to talk about would be the camera performance. And I still think even though after using the Samsung Galaxy S7, that this is a top grade shooter. Pictures are very sharp, pictures are very clear, the brightness, exposure, color, everything is accurate, video quality as well, everything is just really nicely done, smooth transitions from dark to light, bright and very smooth of a video and all that, so the camera performance is still top notch. So where does this phone stand now? I think now with a price at around 300 euros here in Germany for the 32 gigabyte version, I think it's a better buy than ever because the build quality is still totally fine for that price range, the display quality as well, especially if you calibrate it. Sound maybe not the greatest one, but still good enough. Performance is easily on a flagship level, so no complaints about that. Battery life is slightly above average and still decent enough. You get a great software experience here and you have the ability to use custom ROMs, which is a definite big benefit in my eyes. And you get a high grade camera. So all that makes it one of the best choices, if not maybe the best choice for around 300 euros. There are cheaper versions or cheaper phones on the market that offer a quite similar experience. But overall, this package makes it one of the best all rounders. It's maybe not super premium. And it doesn't really stand out in any particular segment, but it also hasn't really any flaws. If I would have to point out the weaker parts, it would maybe be the slightly flat calibration, which can be fixed, and the not just best speaker. But other than that, it's a really solid phone, and with the price now more reasonable, it's a really, really great choice, a really great offer from Nexus or from Google. So I definitely can highly recommend it if you are looking for something that's maybe not a flagship, but gives you a very, very close to flagship experience. 
So that would be my re-review of the Nexus 5X. I hope you liked it. Give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more content like this, just subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye.